God's grace, mercy, and peace be unto you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Tonight we are talking about sackcloth and ashes. And this Ash Wednesday we are beginning our journey, our journey to Easter, which will have us travel 40 days and through Good Friday the tomb, and the resurrection. And our theme for this time is repentance. And again, as Pastor Weiss explained, on Wednesday evenings, we're going to be particularly looking at the book of Jonah. In Scripture, you find that in the act of repentance, there uh, often is the act of wearing sackcloth and ashes, and putting ashes on yourself. And so, um, just so you know, sackcloth originally was coarse black cloth made from goat's hair that was worn, and you would mix the ashes in with it, all right, and you would wear it as a sign. And I want you to know that if you've ever gotten a brand new wool sweater from someone and you thought that was itchy, it's nothing compared to sackcloth. And for the children, I know we didn't have a children's message. I brought along or have two pictures to share with you because there's not too much online. The first one, this gentleman is wearing a sackcloth and ashes. It's in a foreign country at a demonstration and he is mourning for his nation. And then this is more often what you will see, the next picture. This gentleman wearing sackcloth and ashes is what we normally think about, and that is a sack for flour or vegetables made of burlap. And you can see just barely on his chest the lettering that he has repurposed this from being a container for or a bag for potatoes, and uh, now it is his sackcloth. So what are the times that people would wear sackcloth and ashes? Oh, there is one thing I should mention also at this point. <laughs> like it says in the gospel about prayer and fasting, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Often... If it was a public display, that would be one thing. You take the ashes, the dust of the road, and pour it on yourself, all right? More often the case was when you were having a crisis and you were wearing sackcloth and ashes, you would put the sackcloth on, coat it with ashes, then put your clothes on over top. And can you imagine doing that in the Middle East? I don't know how you hide the smell. I'm just not sure. All right. But when you were in the act of repentance, nobody else was supposed to know at times unless you were doing it particularly on behalf of the nation. Okay? Personal repentance, you'd put it on underneath. Can you imagine if your undergarments were made of goat's hair? Ha! All right. You'd put it on underneath, and you'd hide it. Here are when sackcloth and ashes were worn. First, as a sign for mourning someone who died. Secondly, a sign of mourning at a national disaster. Third, sackcloth and ashes were worn as a sign of repentance for sin. And when you were praying for God to deliver you. 
It could be from some personal trouble or trouble that was affecting your family, but you would wear it when you were praying for deliverance. Matthew 11 is the only place that sackcloth and ashes appear in the New Testament. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. So he, in this part of the Scripture, he lists the towns that he had gone to and preached the gospel, that he had shared his ministry with, that he had healed many and performed miraculous signs. And he's saying they heard all this, saw all of it, and did not repent. And then the particular verse it appears in, verse 21, Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, arch enemies of Israel, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Jesus calls for repentance. Jesus calls us to consider repentance, consider our need, and he calls out to us. The lesson from this is God has performed many things for you, not only for you in your daily life and throughout, blessing you over and over again, but finally for the forgiveness of sins, went to the cross, died for you, and forgave you. If that has been done for you, then the call is to repent. For us tonight, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we read, particularly these verses, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And then on a night like Ash Wednesday, he continues. He said, as God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. That is, to receive the grace of Jesus Christ, to receive his forgiveness, and not constantly evaluate your life and bring those things that have troubled you and have been rebellion against God before his throne and confess them and ask for forgiveness. We're going through many aspects of repentance this season. I ask you only to consider one part tonight. And that would be this. A willingness to have a contrite heart and a humble heart on this journey. A willingness to be contrite and humble and to bow before God. From Joel chapter 2, even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Remember, at all those times that are listed there, sackcloth and ashes would have been worn. Even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. May God bless each of us of us. <laughs> May God bless each of us on this journey, especially tonight, as we begin by receiving the Lord in this supper. Amen. Now the peace of our God, which passes all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.